Okay, dear friends, uh, dari pusat e pembelajaran uh, UMS, uh, tim ini adanya timbalan pengarah uh, PEP, Dr. Kenneth, eh, Dr. Kenneth. Uh, and our supporting team, uh, we have also our penjelaras for blended uh, learning and training UMS, uh, Puan Sangmi. Okay. Uh, we have Zoo who is in there, our technical supporting man. <laughs> okay. Uh, is it Pendalara as uh, e-learning sini? No. Okay. Anjirin tak dah. Okay. So, um, dalam uh, less than two hours, okay? Maybe one and a half hours, completed. Uh, what is important is that we want to share to you uh, something concerning Smart uh, Retreat and it's supposed to be a better version, uh, okay? That will improve uh, quality blended learning in UMS. Okay. Please move. Okay, I will take, within 10 minutes, I will finish already, okay? Now, this is from the Malaysian Education Blueprint. And by the way, all these are recorded, it's made available for you online, okay? And the outcome of our graduate, okay, are supposed to be on the right-hand side, holistic, entrepreneurial, okay, and all those things. And the enablers to bring out, to really sasikan this kind of graduates from all the public university especially, are all these five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and number nine is where we are involving globalized online learning, pembelajaran dalam talian tahap global. Okay, so PEP is concerning this part. Move on, please. Zoom. So to support the education uh, blueprint, we have the pan version 2.0. There will be a few point zero coming up. But anyway, for 2.0, it shows that uh, for this year, the blended learning target KPI 50%. Okay. Uh, on the whole, in UMS, uh, it is 73% for last year. So we hope that it will increase. Uh, FKSW, somehow, uh, it was not performing so well in the last semester. So we will have to re strategize huh? Okay, sama sama. Okay, move on. Now, blended learning. Very quickly, uh, it is a mixture of face-to-face -face and non-face-to-face -face interaction. So we blend uh, the two of them. Move on. Just imagine, okay, for example, this is a conventional approach. Uh, we are here as a lecturer in front of the student and we have our whiteboard or whatever teaching and we will tell them to refer to some materials that are online. Okay, this is conventional. Move on. Now, what if, dear friends, what if, due to the technology of today, your introduction of this concept that you want to introduce to the student is being video recorded and made available to the student as an online resource. Then what happened? Move on. It becomes a situation called a flip classroom blended learning approach, which means that the student, before coming to the lecture, they consume your video, which is just 5 minutes or 10 minutes introduction to the particular concept. They already have an idea. So when they come to your lecture, the dialogue becomes different. The lecture scenario becomes different. Yeah. It becomes very student-focused, and you can break into small group. There can be deeper questions by the student, deeper, uh, higher-order thinking is taking place. Okay. This is called a flipped classroom. This is one example, one model of uh, blended learning. Okay, uh, move on. So, this is the conventional one, okay? Where the lecturer speaking to all the students, and after that, the students will be given an assignment. When they go back, then self-directed, they do the assignment. And that is where our students will have difficulty. And they're looking for us for help, but nobody around. Now, what happened? Move on. If you flip it around, if you flip it around, then our student now nah, looking at our introduction to them online before they come to the lecture. And when they come back 
to the lectures to be with us, either the lecture or tutorial. There's a lot of questions from them that we can bring out and deeper interaction, deeper engagement will take place. Okay, move on. So we want to move from the conventional way to the blended way. This is just one approach. Flip classroom. We flip it around. Okay. Move on. Uh, these are some of the we, we know that now uh, under KRA1 teaching and learning there's the blended learning is also in there now okay? and these are some of the feedback that we receive uh, from students they find that uh, it's flexible okay? anytime, anywhere they're able to interact with the lecturers self-directed, self-access okay? they can also use their mobile devices and to lecturers, it's also very time-saving. Uh, okay, move on. So, <coughs> our smart, up there actually is smart retreat. This screen is showing it. Uh, it's to support blended learning. Okay, okay, move on. And of course, uh, through our smart retreat, uh, it is to support the realization of higher order thinking in using application of Bloom taxonomy. So we, Dr. Kenneth will be showing us how to make use of very simple tools, okay, so that our students who are very savvy in the technology can now use those tools to come up with very creative invention, innovation. And that's what we want. We want our students to come up with creation, evaluation, higher up there. Okay? So there are simple tools to support on. So our challenge is actually more than 1732. Uh, we use 1732 to audit, actually for auditing blended learning. But in reality, 1732, Dr. Rivida, is not blended learning. No. <laughs> People feel that, no, I fulfill 1732. Okay, that's it. It is not blended learning, the true truth of it. Okay, we go beyond this, beyond this. Okay, let's go on. So our challenge our cabaran, okay, sebagai uh, educator, is using Smart TV3 now, DV3 pula ni, <laughs> Smart TV3, to create interactive and engaging blended learning activities. Okay, so this is what uh, some exciting uh, activities will be uh, shared to you by Dr. Kenneth. Okay, move on. We also have got uh, Smart Version 3, step by step, that is uh, done through Pusat E Pembelajaran, and you can refer to this. You just have to go to PEP UMS, and there's a publication, you click it, you can download that immediately. Okay? Okay. It's available for you free. Move on. Example of the book is an OER. Okay? So, we hope you know that uh, whatever materials that you can be uh, create for our student or by our student, uh, it can also become something called OER. Uh, what what is important about OER? November, just a few months ago, three months ago, okay, UNESCO has already uh, adopted something called the recommendation for OER for all universities throughout the world. So that time our Minister of Education was there also, okay, to uh, endorse it. <coughs> so it will be coming to all the public universities. But in UMS, we know that it's coming two years ago. So we started preparing for it. Okay, move on. So we have something called the OER repository. Now this repository is built for me and for you, for all of us, okay. Uh, how important is this OER repository? Anything that you deposit up here, anything you know, whether it be video, whether it be your article, whether your notes, okay, it will also appear and it will be caught by Google Scholar. Okay, and it will be shared to the world. So make sure it's original. Lah. Okay, and anything that you put here, uh, it must be open license. We cannot use copyright here. So copyright, you put into e-print under library. But here it is OER. And this is the open license that actually Datuk Wisi is also talking about. Increase uh, our visibility, increase citation. Use this, use this. 
So we will show you some example afterwards. Okay, go on. Now to produce OER, uh, there are many ways. So one of them is to produce screencast, and we have the equipment for you. It's called screencast omatic. Okay, so instead of a, uh, you see, this is very conventional, you know, having a video camera. Okay. Uh, and then it's also recording uh, the screen. It's very old, old technology. But the new technology is very cheap and very easy to use. Uh, whatever that you have on the screen, you can use screencast o to record it, including yourself. You want your face or don't want your face, up to you. You can choose. And then you record your lecture in your room, in your room. And after that, five minutes recording or ten minutes, up to you. Then you put it into the repository, and our student can access, and it becomes part and parcel of your OER. It's part of your publication. Okay. Example, uh, Zoom. Maybe just take one of them, the first one. Contoh. Uh, is it online here? Is that no. No line. Oh, no connected. So here we have uh, a lecturer where the PowerPoint is there and the video is also there. So there's a camera. Biasanya so slow in this place or huh? very slow here here. Okay, we have to inform JTMK. Okay, I guess JTMK will improve huh? actually the line over here. We have to inform them or they don't know. Okay, do that. We have to inform JTMK. Uh, this is not good. Kalau tak ada ini, we don't talk about vendor learning also. Okay, so we go on. Oke, terima kasih kerana masih lagi setia bersama kami di Memory FM Memory Worm You All From The Inside. Oke, kepada mereka yang mendengar ataupun berminat dengan segmen Radio OKE yang bersiaran setiap hari Sabtu jam 9.15 minit malam, bolehlah berlatih dengan lagu Ismail Izani luar biasa kerana lagu itu adalah antara lagu yang akan diperkandingkan pada minggu ini Ok, kita berhibur terlebih dahulu Dengan Ismail Izani Luar biasa Ok So, you want to put your face You don't want to put your face You control You are the director Ok You are the director Ok, Assalamualaikum semua Baiklah, hari ini uh, okay. Anda akan Move on. Move belajar on. bagaimana cara untuk membaca berita. Okay. So you see, there's a PowerPoint and there is your video and this can be done very easily just by clicking record. Uh, Atul Dr. Kenneth will show you how easy it is. Okay. <coughs> another way, another contoh down there. The last one. Oh, no need, no need. No need. With that line. Okay, move on, move on. Okay, so very very briefly, uh, let me introduce a little bit concerning OER. Okay, <coughs> so uh, UNESCO in 2012, there is an OER declaration 
call on government worldwide to openly license publicly funded education materials for public use. Dear friends, uh, our hasil in the university comes up from a lot of research. And our research is actually funded by the government, by the university, which actually comes from public public money. Okay. Now the public wants to look at our hasil and ask for the report, then we tell them, oh, please go and look at this particular journal. And then they want to look at the journal, they probably have to subscribe and pay some money. So what happened? UNESCO is now addressing this problem and saying that this copyright issue, the publishers have actually hijacked our work. It's all hijacked by them. So what if we make it open license? Okay, go on. And this is what I mean by in November, UNESCO has already adopted a second declaration on this. Zul, go on. Yeah. So everything that is available on the internet is copyrighted, which means that sebelum kita pakainya, we will have to write for permission. And then we get say, okay, then kita pakai. But we are too busy many times to go and get for permission. So it is illegal in the sense of huh? infringement of copyright. There are also materials in a PD, public domain, which means that you can use it tanpa dapat kebenaran. Now, in between, there is something called creative common. So, this is something that is uh, being promoted to actually all public university. Okay, go on. So, there are actually four symbols here. You can see a BY, it means attribution. That means, uh, anything you see, but CC, BY, you boleh pakai tanpa kebenaran. Go ahead and use it. But set the name of where you get it from. Similarly, your own work. You put CCBY, people use your work, they set the name. Increasing our citation. And that is what we want for academic. Okay. No derivative equal sign means uh, you use my work, you cannot change color, cannot modify anything. Non-commercial, you cannot use my work and make money out of it. And share alike, please do the same open license. Okay, move on. So, there are actually all these. When you go back today, you just Google uh, CC. And you'll be able to see this thing coming up. Okay. So, in UMS, they're using something called CC, BY, NC. That means all your materials, people cannot make money out of it. But they can use your work, but they must cite you. They must cite you. Okay. And OER means that you people can retain it, people can reuse your work, people can revise your work, people can remix your work, people can redistribute your work. And isn't that what we want as academic? Isn't it? Okay. The hasil hasil kajian, uh, if we just keep it, shelf it, then forever it will not be propagated and nobody will be citing us. So this is what we want, I think the 5 R. Okay, go on. So let us challenge the status quo of copyright. How about we go into something called open licensing? Go on. Zoom. Yeah. So, example. Okay, example. Huh? Now look. Here it is a CCBYNCSA by MIT. MIT, do you know that all the courses are available freely? All the videos, all the syllabus, all the notes, all the PowerPoint, everything. And you can take it and create a course, create a program, no problem. You don't need to ask permission. That's what it is. So beside MIT, you know, uh, Stanford, Harvard, you can go to the site, you can uh, get materials to support our student. Okay? So 2,400 courses, over 200 million. And okay, move on. Okay. So, just very briefly, and uh, later on, there are courses concerning uh, OER. If you see them along under our training center, then you just register, there will be more uh, courses there, workshop. Okay. Sharing some activities in PEP, which is all for us, you know. All the activities in Pusat E Pembelajaran, please remember, Pusat E Pembelajaran is a service center. Okay, and uh, we have now moved uh, to a new place, that's one month old, uh, in Bagunan uh, K, 
FPG, FPG, level five, the same level as uh, Huawei. Okay, uh -huh. okay, the door is always open. So just anything you want to do, just come to us. Any ideas, come and uh, discuss with us. We can facilitate. We will help you. Okay, please. Okay, example, uh, we through PEP we send projects, you know, for international competition. So this year, very soon, next month, uh, we will be sending out an announcement. So those of us, there are so many talented people here. I know, especially from the study, so many talents here. So if you have some innovative approaches, you know, of uh, teaching and learning, participate. Okay, and then uh, you will be coming to teach uh, before a crowd, and then uh, if you are selected, you will represent Wakil UMS uh, in international competition. So, example, okay, go on. We have a MAEP, Maslisa Anugara e Pembelajaran. Dr. Port is at the corner, corner there. <laughs> okay, and many of our people here. Now, all these actually is a recognition of contribution of uh, what you have done for blended learning or for competition okay and you have been invited so uh, the top management of our uh, UMS is giving a uh, due recognition actually for e-learning so we have this activity that happened a few months ago okay go on very quickly uh, this is a program to highlight digital identity and increase our global marketability among our graduates. So, at the moment, uh, this is being sent out to the alumni of FKSW who are unemployed. So, it helped them to be upskilled. And for our present uh, students in UMS, uh, the concept paper will be tabled to our Senate meeting, this Duopolo, and Senate will, if approved, then all students in UMS can take this online course. And the thing is, you know, if you pass, whether it is a uh, you know basic or the intermediate or the advanced, then you get a certificate. And that grade of yours, of the student, of our student, will be added into the academic transcript. So we hope that this will improve our graduate employability. Okay. Uh, you can go to actually our website, you can also see there now at the moment. Okay, move on. So these are some of the activities you know, that we are doing uh, through PEP to support our students as well as our academic staff. Uh, this is a book, a book that is produced by library, DTNK and PEP uh, for the student. Okay, move on. Okay, MOOC. Uh, very soon, I think because uh, Datuk BC is very interested to produce more MOOC in uh, UMS. Okay. So, there will be whoever that is interested, you know, you got your contents ready, you want to produce MOOC, okay, uh, please get ready to grab the opportunity. We are using a platform called MOOCit. Uh, those are who have been involved with uh, MOOC before, okay. Uh, there was something called Open Learning, Open Learning Global, okay? but uh, they say free, 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 okay, for five years. But during the two and a half years, suddenly they ask for money, uh, and the money they ask now the new formula they give. If every one of us participate, you know, to just make a small little move, okay, uh, the university must pay for everybody up to at least half a million. So it is. We see say cannot, that So we have alternative, okay? So Commonwealth of Learning come to support us. This is an open source uh, MOOC platform. Okay. Uh, test run by JTMK and it is coming up very, very soon. So we will be announcing this. There will be uh, training and it's very easy to use. Okay. Okay. 